today. AMD is releasing this to the DIY market. RX 7000 gets two GPUs in one. The GPU flood is here and the first review of Intel's first desktop GPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD has officially announced that their Threadripper 5000 CPUs are finally coming to the DIY market, with pre-built PCs coming as early as July. Of course, the processors have been available to OEMs for a little while now, and it was sort of a question if they'd ever bring them to the DIY market. But as you can see from the box, that's not a question anymore. Now these are Threadripper Pro models, meaning the 5000WX series, so it doesn't look like AMD plans to launch a non-pro variant. Of course, that's not too surprising given these really are made for the professional side anyway, but it's great to see AMD finally release them to the DIY market. The new CPUs bring up to 64 cores and 128 threads, as well as support for up to 8 channel DDR4 and 128 lanes of PCI Express 4.0. Not only that, but they do still support memory and core overclocking. The CPUs are set to make their debut in the DIY market later this year. All in all, this is really exciting for professionals and enthusiasts alike. And of course, if you like that, you're going to love learning more about computer science with this video's sponsor, Brilliant, the one place I recommend for learning the STEM field, whether it's computer science, math, science, or really any field in STEM, because Brilliant was made to teach it. And today, you can actually try it for free when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermelt, where you'll learn from some of the brightest minds from Microsoft, Google, and more, so you know you're learning the right stuff, and you'll learn the best way because Brilliant teaches you by actually showing you you with fun, interactive puzzles. Like you've got to check out their course on neural networks. It actually goes over how it works and the way we can teach computers and have them learn for themselves. So don't wait any longer and visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld to try it out. And the first 200 of you who visit the link will get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Next up for today, AMD could be releasing an even more powerful GPU than what we thought with their RX 7000 cards. So far, AMD has officially confirmed that their RX 7000 GPUs are built on an MCM design, but rumors have pointed to it using a single GCD, meaning the actual compute cores are only on one chiplet, while other things like cache are on separate chiplets. That's obviously still a massive departure from traditional GPUs, but we were originally hoping for at least a dual GPU. GPU part. Well, it looks like we may in fact get it, as known leaker Graymon55 claims that there's a Navi 3 GPU that comes with a whopping 16,384 cores. That would be 128 compute units, or exactly double the rumored Navi 32 compute units, meaning it would essentially use two Navi 32 chips in one. And like I've said before, this wouldn't be a GPU running in Crossfire like previous dual GPUs. Instead, it would be looked at as a single GPU. At least that's the hope. One possibility Red Gaming Tech gives is that this is a Radeon Pro GPU, so it may not be made for gaming, and Graymon55 leaves that open as a possibility. Either way, he claims that it's set for release in 2023, so I guess time, as always, will tell. Next up, the GPU flood is here, and it means rock bottom prices on GPUs for all. As I've been over before, cryptocurrencies recently saw a massive crash. I'm talking they're at a third or even worse of the highs they saw last year, and that's led many miners to try and recoup at least some of their costs by selling their GPUs. Case in point, multiple Chinese miners and even internet cafes have begun auctioning off hundreds of GPUs online. You can see what I'm talking about in these pictures. As an example, a bunch of 3060 Ti's were selling for $300 to $350 US, a fraction of the price they were selling for just a few months ago. And of course, I know there's a fairly big debate about whether it's a good idea to buy a card owned by miners, given they would have been running at 100% 24-7. But as I've said, this will have an effect on the new market as well. Case in point, EVGA just officially announced the end of their queue system. In the update, EVGA states that because they have sufficient 
sufficient stock of 30 cards at EVGA.com and retailers, all pending queues will be removed on June 23rd. Ultimately, this is big proof that things are finally returning to normal, marking a pretty huge departure from even just a couple weeks ago. And like I've said before, this should mean below MSRP pricing. In fact, Newegg is currently having what they call a bonanza sale right now, where they're selling a ton of GPUs, motherboards, and more at steep discounts. For example, you can pick up this 6900 XT for $719 after the rebate and promo code. I'll have an affiliate link to the sale down in the description below. It doesn't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. And lastly for today, Intel's first desktop ARC GPU review is here, as the embargo for the ARC A380 has been lifted. So far, the only reviews are on the custom Gunner A380, given it's the only third-party card officially out. And of course, they're only in China, as once again, Intel hasn't released the GPU worldwide just yet. Either way, if you remember just a few days ago, I went over the fact that Intel's claim of 25% better performance per Yuan versus the RX 6400 ultimately makes it just a few percentage points faster. Well, it looks like that claim is extremely optimistic, or just downright false. See, in Port Royal and 3D Mark's Time Spy, the A380 actually beats the RX 6400 and 6500 XT. But when it comes to actual performance, Intel's GPU loses to not only the RX 6400 and 6500 XT, but even NVIDIA's GTX 1650. And you can see this in every game tested. Now, the difference in performance between synthetic benchmarks and real-world games could just be drivers, but I wouldn't be too hopeful. We've seen a similar discrepancy in ARC for quite a while. Maybe more optimization in games will come as time goes on, but given Intel themselves didn't claim too much better than this, I don't see it being all that great. Of course, pricing is a factor, but as terrible as AMD's RX 6500 XT is, you can get one for a fairly decent price already. At the end of the day, this doesn't give me a lot of hope. Though Intel has delayed their discrete GPUs time and time again, they clearly have major issues to work out. The real question is whether they can fix it before AMD and Nvidia release their next-gen GPUs. So while that does it for today, are you bummed about Intel's discrete GPU? Just excited that prices are finally coming down? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to visit brilliant.org slash gamermel. And as always, have a great day!